coming to you live from the hive here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. We made it for Let's Just Stamp, yay! <laughs> so excited. I can never find things when I'm looking for them and they're always right in front of my face. And I think that is a normal occurrence for most of us. <laughs> oh, so I was looking for the cards for class today and they were sitting right on the table, right in the middle over there, right where I set them, because it's always right where you put them. <laughs> so that's how that goes. Yay! So I see Patricia Settles here on time. Whoop, whoop. You were the early bird. Hopefully you get the worm. Hi, Mary Lemke, buzzing in with happiness. I'm so excited to see that. Hey, Judy Sharp. Got the happy mail and you're cleaning your craft room. Yay, to new paper snips, right? <laughs> Yay! So Judy and Quincy both uh, won from the last scavenger hunt and I got to send their prizes out to them last week. Yay! Hi Donna Grushki. Hi Debbie Gast. There's Hope Toy. Yay! Excited for class. Hi Angelique. There's Sarah Merchant. Hi Connie Moore. Connie Moore made me happy. She had her package, went round and round the United States and finally it ended up on her doorstep today. And I think, I don't know where it all went, but um, her package went like this. And then also um, Barbara Smith, her package went from here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, all the way down to Miami, Florida. And then it went over to Colorado. It took the long way, I guess. <laughs> Hi, Susan Bellamy. Hi, Rose Garibaldi. Rose, I am so sorry. You sent me a text and I was like, ah, oh, I have to reply back to it when I have a more, uh, a more than a second. You guys, it was a whirlwind, and Rose, you got caught up in my whirlwind. Um, so with the MS benefit, we had predicted how many of the bonus extra cards we would need to make, and we estimated 60. Well, we were way off, and we, which is good, we were, we were okay with being off because we ended up making 16 more. And so those people who kind of like uh, signed up towards the end versus the beginning, uh, we had to wait with your packages to uh, make that extra card. And so Rose, you were one of them that kind of got caught up in the whirlwind of making the extra card, which kidding up the extra card, I should say. And so we, I had every intention of shipping it out on Friday of last week. And I looked over on the counter and it's still there, Rose. So your package, I do not have tracking for it. So you just sent me a text asking if there's tracking. And I am, I'm so sorry. It's still on my counter. I just looked. I'm like, oh, it's still there. Oh, shoot. Oh, no. So, but it is, I will make sure it goes in the mail today. I have about six other packages that I've got to do like ad hoc, some ad hoc shipping. You guys, we usually do a big shipping day. And then after the big shipping day, we come up for air. And then we bank more as you guys order classes. We kind of like to send them on the back counter. And we don't do a shipment here and a shipment there because it just uh, it eats more time when you do one-offs. And so, Rose, I have you on the back counter yet. And I have about six or seven packages I need to mail out today. And so yours is going to mail out today. So you'll get a tracking number very soon. So I hope if you want to confirm that you've got that <laughs> or heard that, otherwise I'll also reply to your text. Hi, Riandi. Hi, Pauline. Yay. Yay, you're here. Hi, Dawn Tuck. Hi, Sandy Coy Emery. I love it that you're here too. Hi, Sandy Wicklander. Long time no see. You guys, we had a radically retro swap party yesterday. And so I got to see Sandy on that. Yay. Hi, Mary Carls. Hi, Jenna Helms. How was the music? You guys like the music? Jenna hooked me up and we got lots of music now that will come in the front end and the back end. She likes my shirt. So this is some optional swag, I guess, that we could purchase from or like via going to on stage. And I realized it now that I did buy the sweatshirt. I also bought the hat, which is underneath my Be Happy Stamper ones. So this was the optional hat that people could that people can there's my trucker hat, okay? So um, I'm not much of a hat wearer, but um, I thought it would be cute for more decoration for me. <laughs> so, so I realized after the fact that this was the sweatshirt that I bought and it is super, super soft. And I like that the Stampin' Up! logo is up high so that it's not like on my like breast area down here. That's what you guys can see the Stampin' Up! Yay. So, and it's super soft. All right, so you like it. I'm happy that you like it. Um, I wish I would have bought five of them because <laughs> I feel like this is a sweatshirt that I want to have for the rest of my life and I know it will get worn out. Uh, it just fits perfectly. I love it. I love it. I love it. Hi, Francis Rodriguez. Yay. Oh, yeah. Take a deep breath, right? It's like Kelly has been here since nine o'clock this morning. I had some one-on-one -on -one time with Kelly Lamb, who, if you guys know, she does my paper pumpkin videos. She helps me with my marketing side. We sat side by side for the last three hours working on things. And so it was good to knock some things out. 
I'm primarily working on the Inspiration Hive, all right, which I'll give you an update on momentarily. Hi, Jamie Kirkpatrick. Hi, Lynn Beasley. Hi, Barbara Gobby. Yours went from Ohio to Omaha, Nebraska. So like the opposite way, and then back, and then to Ohio, then back to home, Omaha, and then back to Ohio. So it got lots of miles on it. Hi, Tina Gaskin. Hey, Vicki Rodriguez. Hi, Julie Biersbach. All right, Rose, I'm glad that you confirmed that you got it. <laughs> so, oh yeah. Hi, Sarah Mitchell. Yay. Hi, Cheryl. All right. I bought the sweatshirt too. Check to see if it's in my mail. So, Jenna Helms. So, that's very interesting that you say that you bought the sweatshirt too, but you didn't get it. That makes me, do you, so do we have access to see what the sweatshirt looked like? Anybody who went to on stage that bought the sweatshirt, now you're making me believe that this maybe wasn't the sweatshirt that we bought because I don't know why you wouldn't have gotten it as well. And somebody else I heard here say like at back or on stage that they didn't have the sweatshirts ready. So I guess I'm, I am a little bit confused now. Is this really the sweatshirt that we could buy? Because I honestly don't remember what it looked like. I just know I bought a sweatshirt and I bought a hat. I did not buy the bumper stickers. Um, but it is comfortable. <laughs> Julie, it's very comfortable. So we need to do some investigating to figure out if this really is the sweatshirt or if there was another sweatshirt. <clears throat> so, because you should have yours, right? And I know other people bought the sweatshirt too. Hmm. I don't, I guess I don't know now. <laughs> but I thought, well, I'm going to wear it because it's been sitting in the box ever since I got back from on stage. It's been sitting in the box kind of with my backpack that I got. And uh, I just was like, okay, we need to use this sweatshirt. And it was a little bit cooler in here. But okay, going back to, oh, I've lost my armrest here. Um, <clears throat> going back to Kelly. So we know that the Inspiration Hive is not completely up to date. <clears throat> you don't remember, they said it was going to be mailed to us. Okay, so we should call Stampin' Up! and ask them what the plan is with the sweatshirt. And then I should find out why I got this sweatshirt. If it was being in the top 100 gift or if it was something, I have no idea. Um, but the Inspiration Hive, we, so I got that up and running back in late January. And a lot of the team are in there. It's a, a gift that I give to my team for being on the team once they place their first order. So I've got a lot of my team in there. Not everybody, but I like a good bulk of them. <clears throat> and then there were people that also, my customers that have subscribed to it, that some subscribed to get it monthly and some subscribed, they did a yearly subscription. And it houses a lot of PDF tutorials. Hi, Sherry Martin. Um, I bet it's this, no, 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 no. It's not a silver elite sweater because, sweatshirt, because Diane Bogenhagen didn't get it. What we got for Silver Elite was the pink pencil case um, that goes down and up. So I should call and ask them. Um, but the Inspiration Hive is my repository for all of my tutorials. And I shouldn't say all of them. Um, no, I don't think we got this sweatshirt for being Silver Elite. Did And anybody else that's watching that Silver Elite that went to Onstage, I don't believe you guys got the sweatshirt because Diane didn't have it in her bag. Because then Diane will be like, Call and stamp and I'll be like, I didn't get my sweatshirt. And I don't remember anybody else getting a sweatshirt. Um, it's yours is for your top standings. The purchase ones are on back order to the end of April. Okay, so Judy Sharp has the answer, you guys. So this was the sweatshirt I got for being in the top, some number. And then that makes sense. Okay, and then we get ours the end of April for those who bought sweatshirts. Okay, that makes sense. Hi, Jean. Uh, Jeannie Curtis. Uh, so Inspiration Hive is my repository that I've created. It has, I shouldn't say all of my tutorials in it because that's what I sat with Kelly to work on. There were, we wanted to have collages for everything so that when you guys look at it, that you can kind of see, well, what, what are you making when you click on the PDF? Hi, Veronica. Uh, and so I was missing some other classes. I was missing some product-based classes. Sometimes we weren't always making collages back in the day. So we're trying, so I sat with her to try to like regroup where we're at. And I guess I can share with you and show you, like see if I can pull it up on my phone. So anybody can um, uh, subscribe to this. It's open to everybody in the, in the whole world. I think even somebody from England is subscribed at the moment, which is super, super cool. So when you click, let's see if I can click in here to show you guys what it looks like the Inspiration Hive. When you have access to it, you're able to click on members content. And so you have to have an account and subscribe, you know, subscribe. It has all of the tutorials. So, and when you click on it, it takes you right into, let's see if it'll work for me. Uh, yep, yeah, it worked. It takes you right into the PDF tutorial. So you have access to see it and download it. And so I have all, so ink, paper, scissors for those that want an update. I love it. Hi, Catherine Healy. 
ink, paper, scissors is complete. Like there is not one we're missing. There's a cover photo or a collage on all of them. I have the name of the class, which is generally either the suite or the bundle name. <clears throat> the suite bundle classes, they're up to date. They're all there. The only like issue that we have is in the beginning of the times, um, there, this is still loading. That's why there's nothing here. In the beginning of the times, way back in the early 2020s, like when I went, I started doing my online classes, we didn't have cover photos for some of these starting probably at um, like Hydrangea Hill, Fine Art Floral, Ice Cream Corner. All of these Kelly's working on making collages so that when you click on them, it's still downloading. You guys, there's so much content in here. It's still downloading the pictures. Um, so that is what we're updating. And then let's just stamp what she helped me get now are the collages for these. And again, you can't see them. Like it is still downloading content. Like if you go back up here, it's still kind of trying to download them. So if I refresh my screen here, more will be up here. So I know it's going really fast, but see now these are populated. And we were good all the way down to Snowflake Splendor. See, it was still up late uploading. So Snowflake Splendor, we're working on getting the collage so you guys can kind of see what it looks like. We got um, all the Let's Just Stamp classes are in there. She's going back and adding, um, creating collages for all these. So like you can see what Magical Metal looks like and Rustic Crate looks like. We've got monthly classes all in there now, all the way back to January of 2020. So four years worth of tutorials for just monthly class alone. That's 48 tutorials. The, the one thing that she helped me with on today, you guys, all of these are it's, it's still downloading the pictures. I have Rose's Technique Club classes, and for the year, we're going to be adding all of last year's yet. The fun folds are pretty much in there. We're updating collages for the ones that don't have collages. And I have about 20 more other classes to add, and I have about 20 more of the um, product basis classes to add. So there's quite a few. There's about 40 more that are coming out of all of this, though that's a smaller percentage. I have mystery cards in there all the way back to June of last year. And I've got the DSP samplers in there for the last year. Oh, they populated. Look at this. So there, they just popped in. You guys, so my so my phone was uploading all this information. Uh, so I've got the DSP samplers. We've got mystery card nights in for half a year. And then um, still working on probably 40 more tutorials. And then I think we'll call it good uh, because I don't have tutorials from... Oh, I do. I do have the monthly class tutorials from like 2019 to 2016. And I'll have to think about if it's worthwhile to put them in or not. It would take me probably like six hours to get them in there. And then the thing is, do we put collages or not? So anyways, it's good stuff. A uh, lot of, ins we call it the inspiration hive. There's a lot of good information in there. Um, if you are lacking in creativity and you need a little help, like that is the place to go get it. So, um, and again, I've been working with a lot of my team members to make sure that they have, they get a free membership for the year and then it renews every year as long as they're still on my team, which is super cool. Okay. So let's flip down here. I want to share with you, we are going to be making cards here momentarily. We have three cards we're going to be making, and they are actually all fun folds. Um, this is the April Let's Just Stamp that we're going to be doing soon. Um, it features the Be My Valentine, and it's three different fun folds, like a Z fold like that. Hi, Mary Schreiber. We've got a little bookmark card here, and I have here, this is an easel card, and I am realizing right now, I wonder if Kelly's still in the house. Oh, you <laughs> Uh, I think I have to go upstairs and get my stapler because I don't think I have my little baby stapler down here. So I might be running upstairs really quick to get something for this class before we get started. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys really quick about my In Color Club. Um, if you are interested in joining, uh, I gotta plug this in, a five month club coming soon. I just published this this morning. The email might have gone out already. If you go to my website, cardsbycrispy.com and you click on May 1st. May 1st is gonna be the meat and potatoes for everything new that's coming up in terms of the new catalog. The In Color Club is gonna be there. I'll publish the DSP sampler information there and the product share information. For right now though, I have the In Color Clubs are forming and this has all the information on it. It has the pricing and what you get and what colors you're gonna get what month. And then also on top of it, for the first time this year, you're gonna get 15 cards as gifts, like kits, I should say, not cards, kits to make your own cards. <clears throat> I have the cards finished. I'll share them with you. But what you get, <clears throat> I have the frog this morning, or it's actually afternoon. Um, 
a free gift for me. You would get the gems the first month as an extra little bonus for, um, for doing the club with me. But over the course of the five months, you'll get one set of all the color family things. So things like you'll get the blends, you'll get your eight sheets of designer series paper. <clears throat> so I'll divide these up and you'll get your color each month. You'll get one of these glimmer papers. Um, either if you're local to me, it'll stay 12 by 12. If you are not lo local, I'm gonna cut it down to six by six so it fits in a padded priority envelope. So you'll get those. Each month you'll get the coordinating ribbon for whatever color, like the first month I picked Petunia Pop because it's purple. Of course I had to pick purple for first. You'll get your stamp and write marker the first, like each month you'll get one of these things. And then the ink pad here, you'll get your coordinating color. And then you'll also get the pack of cardstock that coordinates. So, and that's written in here, what you get each month. It's listed out here and the value. Um, so it comes out like it's based off of um, ordering it and having it shipped to my house. And then I um, have that price for porch pickup. And then I also have the price if you need it mailed. And basically it's $10 extra if you want it mailed to you. Let me go grab the cards, you guys, really quick that you'll get. So I've been doing the In Color Club for many years. I'd say about four or five. And this is the first year that I added it on. So it's like basically you're doing a $50 purchase with me every month to get the color. So I looked at it as like, well, that's about the equivalent. That is the equivalent of doing a class with me. And so what will happen is the first month, you're going to get the card kits to do the purple cards, the Petunia Pop. So you'd get those three card kits, including I'll include a strip of designer paper too so that you can do your envelope. So the first month you get these three card kits, okay? And then whatever color I have listed next, which is pretty in pink, I guess, you would get these three, the kits to do these three, right? So they'll mail out with the color. And then the next month you would get, I have Summer Splash set up to be next. So you would get these three kits, cool. And then Peach is next. So you'd get these in August, right? And then these would be set up to get in September. So by the end, one of the perks of doing an In Color Club with me is you would get 15 card kits that are give, sent out three each month to you. So super fun, pretty cards. You do not need stamps to do these cards besides sent and a sentiment. So no focal images are needed. You just need something to stamp on your hexagon on a little strip of paper, and then there's a hexagon. And you guys, the hexagon punch, I saw that it was back in stock, and then I saw that it was out of stock again. <laughs> so hi, Carmen Melendez. Hi, Jennifer Jones. Um, can this be sent with our monthly card classes that we get each month? So that is an awesome thing to ask because what I've decided is anybody, so I know I already have two people signed up for this, uh, Linda Rios and uh, Connie Moore, have uh, both signed up for this and, I, and they've already sent me their lists of what they want for like May classes. And I said, we will use this as your base for shipping, right? Because they're okay with getting one shipment a month and what will happen is this will be the base. So any card classes that they add on to it will have minimum shipping. Like it, I take off $4 per class that we consolidate. And so th there's a savings with shipping. So yes, this can get mailed out with your other card classes that you get as long as we do, as long as we set you up for one shipment a month, which it'll always ship out about the middle of the month because we usually have all of our kidding done around the 15th, 16th, or 17th. So the classes that are earlier in the month, you wouldn't have them in time, but the you'll have your kits in time for the later classes. And yes, so this will be the base for shipping classes out for anybody who wants to do the In Color Club. Good question, Donna. Um, hi, Melanie Foy. The other thing I'll put out there too, in case anybody wants to do it, <laughs> I'll have to figure out how we're going to do it. But if anybody wants to be a part of the club and get everything through me, uh, but they want it all right away. Hi, Jeannie Parker. Um, if they want it all right away, meaning they don't want to wait till September to get Shy Shamrock and they don't want to wait to August to get Peach Pie. They just, they want to be part of the club, but they don't want to wait. We'll figure that out too. Uh, because we could send every, we could figure that out too. So if you're somebody who wants it all right away, but wants to be part of the club, I'll work that out too, so that you don't have to wait. And then it'll be less for shipping because we'd ship everything 
all together. You know what I mean? So we'll figure it out, right? I, I, have a, I would have a plan. I would put a plan together if anybody wants that option. And I did have two people that did that last year. So I didn't put it in the information, but just always ask. I can always like say yes, or I can always say no, right? <laughs> so, all right. The other thing I wanted to share with you, just in case you guys didn't miss, miss in case you didn't catch it, we did the kit class last week on Friday. We did the eight cards that featured by your side um, with the cats and the dogs. And so that class um, went pretty good, you guys. We oh, we did these and then we also, we didn't quite get these done, but these were super cool. It's the Hooray for Honeycomb. And, and that was super cool like that. So, and then this guy was my favorite with the sun opening up. All right. So if you guys want to get in on any of those kits, they're available for purchase. Um, but that was super fun. And then the what we have coming up this week, just to remind everybody where we're at this week, we have class on Thursday night. Oh, perfect, Vicki Rodriguez. Yes, send me an email. I'll make sure I get you signed up for it. Um, the class that I have on Thursday night is called Perennial Lavender, and we're going to be making these three cards. You guys have been seeing these. Um, very cool, right? Those th four cards are Thursday night. I have about 12 left of that class in case anybody still wants to sign up. Ink, paper, scissors will be the following week with the hot air balloons, the lighter than air, I believe it's called. These are the four cards that we're going to make with the ink, paper, scissors class next week. I have space left at this class. And then the other, there's one more that's coming up next week as well. And that is the in color card class, the retiring in colors. I have a plethora of this one left in case anybody wants to get in on this class. The, this one and the perennial lavender are either order based or you can pay the fee where the ink, paper, scissors is always a fee based class. The in color email just dropped. Hey, Debbie Gass said that the in color club, I had it scheduled for one or one thirty. That's exactly, that makes sense to me. It just is in your inbox right now. So the in color class, is uh, next week as well. Perfect. If anybody wants to get in on the monthly class, I still have about eight of this left too, and we did this class last week. So you guys can watch that one too. And let me move these out of the way. And I'm excited to share these in case you haven't seen these yet. The Let's Just Stamp for the month of May is what I'm showing you, and it features the Magnolia Mood Set. These dies I did see are on low inventory. So if you're interested in this one, you might consider getting them before they go out of stock, but they'll probably come back. And there's always the Good Morning Magnolia that you could use or other stamps that you have at home that would work with this class as well. But I wanted to share these with you so you could get excited for the Let's Just Stamp that I have for next month. Uh, Diane will be teaching this class in person and I'll be doing it online. Oh man, when will it be? Uh, <laughs> so. If you're always wondering when classes are, you can always go to my event calendar and I have, let's just stamp, it must be that one. Sometimes I have to move my phone there. Oh, I have to update this. So Kelly just photographed these for me this morning. She'll be creating a cover photo momentarily or today or tomorrow. And that's the information. The class will be held on Monday the 20th. So very cool. I think that's a little bit of the housekeeping I have for you guys, just to kind of fill you in. Oh, you know what? Our inquiring minds curious how we did for the, the MS benefit? Are you curious? We did phenomenal. The best MS benefit we've ever done in the spring, by far. Over the top, you guys. So excited. 43 people sent money or were here in person to get in on the raffle, which was awesome. We had 21 raffle baskets. So, so and the way it worked out, 21 people won. Uh, it was just awesome how we kept pulling the, like the tickets out and we did, it was amazing. We did not have anybody duplicate. So about half the people who got tickets got a basket or a prize. Um, Barbara Gabby, I definitely agree. Those Magnolia cards are amazing. I did a rough count and we did just over $900 on the raffle alone. You guys are gal, like the guys, everybody's amazing. I say guys universally, okay? So if I'm saying guys, I mean it to everybody. Uh, so you guys did amazing. Uh, the, uh, just overwhelming, probably one of our best raffles to date. 
just blew my mind. And the cards, between the cards and the bonus cards, was we figured about $2,500. We are just shy of $3,500. I think we're over $3,400, but we're under $3,500. We're somewhere in there. I have not had a moment to count up the actual dollar amount, but it's phenomenal. We've never done more than $2,500 in the spring event. So this is amazing. Uh, we're already, for the benefit that we, we have coming up in the fall for the Wounded Warrior Project, we already have 12 people signed up for that already. So that's amazing. Our goal is to double and then sum the fall event from where we are this year because our goal is 10000 next year. So thank you to everybody who reached out to me since Friday or Thursday even to get raffle tickets. Uh, I will send an email. I've got it started in my email to announce who the winners were. I'll even say them right now. So in case you're watching and you hear your name, I have a prize for you. Um, so perfect. I just, I was so excited, you guys. All right. So the winners uh, for the raffle baskets, the, and I'm just going to go in order from the number of the basket. Uh, number one was the classes that I donated. Uh, Angela Knutson won them. Uh, there was some skincare, spa care items. And Connie Scott won basket number two. Uh, there was a gift certificate for diversions, and Annette Rollin won that. The little purses, there were like a little coin purse and a bigger purse. Debbie Gast! I haven't even told you that, and you're watching, so yay! Debbie Gast, you won those. The There were two cat baskets, one donated by Ann Van Willigan. That basket was won by Cindy Ettringer. Diane's package of Stampin' Up! supplies, uh, like products, was won by Shirley Malarkey! So exciting for Shirley! Uh, the bee wood that Debbie Gass' son, so Debbie Gass donated it and her son made it. That was the honeycomb with a bee on it. That was won by Christina Heiser. There was a craft basket that Annette donated, and that was won by Sharon Perales. There was a garden basket with little house, and it was the huge basket. Number That was basket number nine was won by Lisa Piper. There was a travel bag that you could hold up or like hang on the back of a door. That was won by Emily Busca. Yay, Emily. The Christmas cups and plates were won by Julie Bierschbach. Yay, Julie, if you're watching, congratulations. Uh, the bee frame, okay, there was a bee basket that uh, Jean Terwilliger donated with a bee necklace in it. That was won by Jean Schutt, or Schutt, S-C-H-U-T-T. There was a basket of stamping supplies that were primarily fun stamper journey supplies that uh, somebody had donated, and that was Mary Scott who won them. There was a dog basket that was won by Quincy Bridge. There was a second cat basket that was won by Catherine Healy. Yay, Catherine. There was a basket full of miscellaneous ribbons. And Susan Bellamy, you won that basket. There was a TJ Maxx gift card won by Tracy Gruby. The scary basket. <laughs> there was a scary basket. Uh, there was a doll in there and some things that were more Halloween-y inspired. And there was somebody that always does that for every... Uh, benefit. They donate something like that. Ann Van Willigan won it this year. Again, she had won it last year or the year before, which was super cool. Uh, there's a spring basket won by Shelly Schultz. And then the Wisconsin sign that I donated with Lakeside Wood Creations, we kind of tagged on that one, was won by Karen Forward. Yay to all those winners. I'm so excited. There, so th there's going to be an email that I'm going to be sending out. As soon as I'm done with class, I'm going to finish writing out, it, it out. And in there, I'm also going to put in there, you guys don't even know this yet. Maybe you do. Tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., I'm going to be doing another YouTube class. It's not even really on my calendar. It's not really noted anywhere. I have been talking about it, but it's going to be tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Central. I have all the baskets sitting right over there that we used for class. They're all ready for me to go, and we're going to make the six cards from this benefit together tomorrow at 10 a.m. So for the 58 people who got card kits, you can uh, watch the video and also the email. I emailed out last night the tutorial for class as well. And that tutorial is already in the Inspiration Hive. Boom. I don't think we have any kits left. I really don't. There were two going into this morning, but I saw somebody posted on one of the Facebook events that I had shared that they were interested in one. And I have to, I took a screenshot of it to see who it was, but they didn't tell me like in a, a real form of communication. So I have to reach out to her to make sure she still wants it. And then my godmother, Karen, she took the other one, which was super cool. Now that does leave one though, for anybody that is still looking for a set of these cards for the benefit to help with the donation. 
the class that I'm doing tomorrow morning, I will be making up the very last set of cards and it will be available. I am personally gonna make the cards with you during class and that set is up and available for donation. It would be a $35 donation plus shipping if anybody wants the last one. So Rose Meininger, 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 <laughs> Rose, you were the one that I saw. In case you're watching, you were the one that I saw that was interested in a set of kits. So I'll be trying to contact you after class. So we did it, you guys. We had a very successful MS benefit. I can't thank you enough for all the support that everybody provided to making it this successful. I will be sending, my goal is just to send a check off to the National MS Foundation for 3,500. Whatever it comes out to, I just round it up to the 3,500 and send that off to them. So we did it. We did it. We did it. And now we can also switch gears and start focusing on the Wounded Warrior Project uh, card benefit. That will be October 5th on World Car Making Day. Our goal is to double it. So we did 96. My goal is 200 to 250. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> go big or go home or do both, right? You guys, <laughs> that's how it goes. Oh, all right. Where are we at? I think I'm going to flip the camera down. And I'm going to share with you. I'm going to run upstairs and get my stapler. I really did. I don't have a little baby stapler down here and I want it for this cart. I will be about a minute and I'm gonna go grab my weird rectangular punch here as well. You guys can start studying this. I have my card kits here ready to go, okay? So they're here. And the other thing I'm gonna have you guys study is what we did last week was Debbie Lindauer's card. I have that sitting here. In case you guys didn't see the share a recipe, create a card, inspire others last week, Wednesday, this is what Debbie made. And my card is sitting over on the counter because <laughs> I decided to double dip. We're going to use that card for the burgers and beignets class this week. So, you guys, I need, just give me a minute. I'm going to run as fast as fast can be, and you can't catch me because I'm the gingerbread man. Really, that's not the case, but I just thought that was fun to say. All right, we'll be right back, guys. Okay, I'm back. Got my staplers, my extra punch that we're gonna need for class. I'll catch my breath. And I had to strip down, you guys. <laughs> I got hot. <laughs> uh, the most important question I have for everybody out there, and this is just a public courtesy announcement. Today is April 15th. That means that taxes are due unless you filed for an extension. And I just wanna make sure you didn't forget to file your taxes because that would be sad if you forgot and they charge you interest. So in case anybody is wondering, I filed my taxes at about 12.45. <laughs> I literally hit the submit button about an hour ago and I'm very pleased to announce that I have that oh, sense of relief that I don't have to feel like I have to forget about my taxes. Now, this is normal for me. If you guys have been watching me year over year over year and you catch me around a class around this time, you will definitely always hear that I wait till the last minute to do my taxes. I don't wait till the last minute. I just don't have time to think about them a month or two ago. <laughs> and, and so I started them on Thursday night, which was amazing. I worked on them Thursday night. And then my dad and I sit down every year and he helps me go through to make sure I didn't miss anything and all that good stuff, right? And so we sat with my dad and, um, on Friday night. We had a nice dinner and then we worked on taxes for another hour and then I just submitted them today. <laughs> so all is good. All right. So Angelique asked, will I be doing kits for the Wounded Warrior Benefit too? Absolutely. 
You better believe it. I believe Debbie Gass, I have you to thank for this suggestion. She suggested it last, whenever, after the last one about doing kits. I realized that I work with a lot of people who enjoy making their own cards. I was always worried about, um, can you email the list of supplies, the veterans? Oh, yes, um, Mary, yes. Um, thanks, Carissa. Glad, I'm glad, yay, glad I got them finished, right? Mary, can you send me an email uh, to ask me to do that too? I've got everything in front of me and not a piece of paper. So if you could just send me a quick note or a text, that would be good too. Um, that was one of the best things that we did was transition to offering kits. I think that we got, we were privileged to have more people sign up for the benefit because people really want kits. You guys want to be able to make them your own or adjust them. Not that the team here didn't do an amazing job because I did get a lot of positive feedback that the cards were meticulous and, and perfect and amazing. Uh, and so I was always, I had a lot of good faith in my team here that makes them. But we went and from making 450 cards last fall for the benefit that we did in the fall to only having to make, let me just do the math really quick. It was not a lot out of... 96, we only had to make up 18 sets. 108 cards is what we put together. We had a team here that came in two weeks ago and, and we, we got them done in about a, maybe a day and a half, which it didn't burn us out. Last, I just remember last fall, we burnt, we got burned out from it. We were like so sick of looking at cards and I never want anybody that helps me to ever feel burnt out. Even though I was feeling burnt out. Um, oh, yeah, hi, Irene Miller. It was, yeah, so definitely, Angelique, we are gonna offer kits. And the one thing that I'm hopeful that people who are not local to me will, will consider doing, this is Debbie's idea. She said that she would love to plan a party at, or a gathering, let's say, at her place or somewhere and invite her friends over and potentially take six sets of the class. Well, I'm calling it a class because it'll be like a class. She's going to like, let's say four or six and we can ship all of them to her attention and she's going to then collect the money from her gals, let's say, that want to work with her or guys, whoever, that want to be there that day. And so instead of it just being one to Debbie, now we've just increased to six. And our donation went from one person getting kits to potentially it's World Car Making Day. So we want to get together with our friends and stamp. So I'm hoping that people that are not local to me that can't be here with us that day will host their own gatherings and facilitate their friends coming and being together on World Car Making Day and potentially then having their own party. And on top of it, we plan, I'm already thinking about how can we make this the most amazing event and be together, even though we're not close together. I wanna do a Zoom then, so that, like Sarah Douglas should be here. Like that is what I've heard, that she will be here for this event to represent. And let's say at a specific time, we will do a live Zoom for a half hour to 45 minutes and bring anybody who got kits and who's having their own parties, either they're with themselves, right, at their house by themselves, or if they have people with them, that they could join in on the Zoom so we can all see each other to see where this is all stretching to. And so that is how I'm hopeful that we'll go from 96 to 250, let's say, without having to have to work. You know what I mean? So that is that is my hope. So that is the goal that you guys that all got kits from me this time, We'll invite your friends over and maybe you get three or four or five and I will figure out what the shipping will be then because you won't all have to pay shipping. If six kits are going to your house, that shipping will be less than six going to all six different places, right? So keep that in mind, everybody, all right? Uh, <laughs> keep that in mind so that you know that, that I haven't... Kind of, I haven't put that out there as a payment option, right? So don't, like, don't send me money yet or you just... But you could start thinking and pl I'm planting seeds that you guys know. Uh, that's what I'm th thinking. So Irene Miller, and anybody that already wants to know about the next benefit, if you go to my calendar of events, right? So cardsbychrisb.com and go to events, right? It brings you right up to April. Click or toggle over to October 5th. I've already created the event. Wounded Warrior Project card making benefit. So anybody who wants to get the details, this is kind of mirrored how we did it this past weekend. I did, I will say though, I did raise the price just for this benefit. 
I did it for $35. I made the executive decision. I thought, let's do 35 and ask $5 more per class. And that is straight donation then. Uh, World Card Making Day is October 5th, which is the what we always do our benefit in the fall on World Card Making Day to kind of coincide with it. So just know that I did raise the price just because it's this benefit. I want to match Stampin' Up's $10,000. I want to make sure we get there so that we're like, we did our end and we matched what they're doing, which is $10,000. And with this one too, I know my team is looking to donate. So instead of taking the $7 out of each one, so the donation was not $30, it was actually $23. We kept $7 because that's how much the materials cost. I couldn't have uh, like my team who helped with this out the material cost. With this one, we're hoping once we design the cards and have the recipes that we say, okay, well, we need 10 packs of basic black card stock. We need 10 packs of this. We need 10. My team wants to come together and donate supplies so that we don't have to take anything out of the $35 and do a straight donation of $35. That is really what we're trying to do. So we're hopeful that with a $35 donation times 250, that gets us so close. If you guys do the math, I'm sorry, I'm like going on with this because I'm so excited now. So like we, we did such an amazing job. I'm so pumped for the next one. If you take 35 times 250 people, that's a lot. That's $8,750. Plus if you put in the bonus card in the raffle, we've got it. So if we, that's why I'm setting a goal of probably 200 kits and that's 7,000. And if the raffle brings in 2,000 and we have the bonus card at 1,000, we've hit 10,000 just by raising it by that $5 and doubling the card kits. So I need your help, everybody, to start planning. Can we strategize and have home parties or gatherings with you guys getting a few sets of this class and getting together with your friends? And let's say you don't have the specific stamp set that we're gonna be featuring, maybe you could figure out what, what you could use instead, which is what you're already doing. And we design the cards generally with very few focal images, primarily sentiments. So usually you can adjust for anything that you need to. Fun stuff. Okay. Right. But yes, good question, Angelique. I love it. And maybe Angelique, you'll drive up from St. Louis, Missouri and be with us that week, that weekend. That would be amazing. <laughs> Debbie Guest says, get your party on. <laughs> get your party on, ladies. Exactly. Oh, so fun. All right. Are you guys ready to make some cards? <laughs> question mark. Are you ready to make some cards? I am. We have three amazing cards. This class is the class I do in conjunction with Diane Bogenhagen. It's generally uh, more of our beginner's class. We try not to do any die cutting or embossing. It was so hard to not do embossing with the 3D Hive embossing folder. So I'm, I'm begging forgiveness. Please excuse the fact that we use some retired product on this one. The Hive embossing folder is no longer current but it needed to get used with these B cards because it was it just made each card pop a little bit more. And so if you're wondering where the Beehive embossing folder came from, it is a Stampin' Up! embossing folder. It just is not current. It was from the Heart and Home time when it was the spring mini catalog of two years ago. It was called Heart and Home was the suite where I think it came out in. And I don't know if it's available like on, you know, I don't know if it's available anywhere. I really don't. And I don't think it's in the clearance rack anymore. Maybe it's in the, somebody should look. Tell me if it's in the clearance rack because I maybe it's in the clearance rack. I don't think so, but it could be. Um, Angelique, I would love for you to come up. That would be awesome. I was <laughs> just reading your comment. You got me there. I would love for you to be up here in person. And anybody that is wanting to be here in person for that day, please make an effort. It would be awesome. Hi, Mimi Henley. You will send you cash for the event. Perfect, perfect. Uh, the other thing I was going to say is, I'm having a feeling that we have to restructure the timeline a little bit. I feel more people are going to be coming in person for that event because we do have Stampin' Up! Represent, representation. And I think we might start, let's say, at 8.30 and go to 11.30 and then do the Zoom video from 11.30 to 12.30 and then go 12.30 to 3.30 and then 3.30 to 6.30 for three sessions instead of two sessions. And I think we might have to migrate to the garage and take over the garage and set up tables in the garage. I think it's going to be big. <laughs> so, all right. Whew. All right. Let's talk about let's just stamp. And what, I just really take a drink of water. I find that I'm so thirsty if I don't drink water in between you guys. This is what we're doing. It features this stamp set right here. 
Be My Valentine, which has a punch that goes with it. This stamp set and the punch are both carrying over into the new, uh, the new catalog, which is pretty cool. And this is a card that was actually featured for the, the benefit that we did this past weekend. And this was the card we did. So I've got everything already kind of staged for class tomorrow. And I'll pull from here as I need it, which is super cool. And I know that we're going to need the, there's a the little honeycomb stamp. There's little antennas, which we won't need. And we have here a heart that we could potentially stamp. And we need our B face, which we'll use too. We did set this up on the Stamparatus. Now, Stamparatus is also retired, but it worked great for positioning the stripes here because in this case, we stamped them about three times and it really helps us to line it up good. Uh, I think that we also need, what else? We need a couple sentiment sayings and they are point being pulled from Nature's Sweetness set. And this one is actually from the magnolia here this guy right here the magnolia mood is where we pulled a happy birthday from that's pretty cool and then sending love and best wishes got pulled from the perennial postage stamp so i'll have to go grab that stuff in a moment because i wasn't on my a game and pulling it all before class if you're newer to me and don't know what i'm all about i do a lot of kidding and i shouldn't say i it's we i have helpers it's, i don't do this all myself and we kid up a lot of card kits lots of card kits and this one it, this is how it would come to you it has let's just stamp be my valentine it has the day of class we write your name at the top and you'll get three card kits and inside each envelope is what you need to complete the cards in this case i think there is one card that contains all of your gems so just be careful when you open up this petal pink one that is where you're going to find three of the hearts and flower epoxy shapes and a strip of diamonds all in this one so we'll start with this one since that is where our gems are in be careful though because this fold is on on the bottom here versus this side and some of the, your bits and parts might have gotten left in your envelope so always double check your envelope to make sure you're not leaving anything behind and also don't lose anything <laughs> all right so let's get these out of the way so that we can work on this one first. This slip is good. If you guys are not about ready to make this class, don't throw the slip away. This is your ticket to finding this card on my website to be able to have quick access to the YouTube video and also to check your inbox for the PDF tutorial because you could search in your inbox, be my Valentine, and then you would be able to find it easier. All right, let's open this up and see what we've got. When we fold them, we do not burnish them for you. So you're always going to want to burnish your card on the score lines. And this one contains another score line right here. The PDF tutorial was sent out to everybody on Saturday evening. It was kind of later. So check your inbox or your spam folder if you're taking this class with me to get the PDF tutorial. Now, the PDF has pictures, it has the measurements, it has the instructions. So you can always refer back to that as well. I'm trying to figure out where to put that. I'm gonna set my gems off to the side so I don't lose them. And just a note out that your gems might not look the same. In the flowers and hearts pack, there were hearts and flowers, and some were petal pink, some were blue, and some were like the sweet sorbet, some were big and some were small. Everybody got one blue, either flower or heart, they got one sweet sorbet, flower or heart, and they got one petal pink, um, flower or heart as well. So let's set those there for now. And this is what I'm talking about for the hive embossing folder. This is this is the retired embossing folder. And honestly, we had to use it on every card. We really did. So, so that's already embossed for you. And I am realizing right now what we did. Uh, okay. I just realized what we did for everybody. Everybody. So I pulled kits for myself, and what I'm seeing is we're missing a sweet sorbet. Oh, roll call. Oh, good call. <laughs> Donna, you saved me <laughs> for a moment tell you before I tell you guys something that we forgot to put in your kit, and I don't know. We're going to make do. We're going to figure it out. You guys will be fine. I, I will be fine. Things happen like this, and this one is a very fixable issue, <laughs> mistake. So roll call, though. 
Thank you to everybody who did this class with me. I like to do the roll call to show my appreciation and personally thank you for taking this class with me. Everybody who I list here either bought the kits from me or they placed an order to get this class for free. And those people that placed an order to get the class for free, I'll do a drawing at the end of class for a prize. Pat Fleming, Kate Race, Julie Biersbach, Annette Rollin, Brenda Cottrell, Pat Settle, Angelique McClendon, Karen Woods, Nedra Dover, Shirley Malarkey, Sherry Everett, Sandy Wicklinder, Donna Grushke, Jeannie Parker, Jenna Helms, Linda Scott, Leslie McMinn, Sandy Coy Emery, Chris Robinson, Feline Mays, Kathy Showalter, Barbara Godby, Diana Woodland, and then we go over here, Joanne Kahn, Phyllis Oderman, Lisa LaFramboise, Sarah Merchant, Mary Carls, Pat Thomas, Patty Wright, Latokia Trigg, Jeannie Gerdes, no, nope, I got it, Jeannie Gerdes. <laughs> I've said it the wrong way for so long that it's instinct to say it that way, but it's Jeannie Gerdes, Francis Rodriguez, Laura Sullivan, Sherry Martin, Marsha Dean, Lynn Beasley, Cheryl Gardner, Linda Rios, Beverly Smith, Hope Toy, Ruth Nicholson, Debbie Gast, Deanna Stell, Mary Sykes, Vera Anderson, Debbie Savocal, so cool. I have to say it again, so cool. It's a new name, you guys. Welcome to Debbie. I think this is her first class with us, yay. Uh, and this might be Hope's first class where I got to say her name during roll call too, so yay to Hope. Uh, Karen Wetstein, Sharon Davis, Mary Lemke, Angela Knutson, Ruth Miller. Ruth Miller's first class. Now this is Ruth Miller, not from Wisconsin, Ruth Miller. This is Ruth Miller from Colorado, Ruth Miller. <laughs> I have two Ruth Millers in my uh, company. Uh, Rose Garibaldi, Lori Baxter, Susan Warmly, Susan Bellamy, Vicki Rodriguez, Patty Taylor. Yay to all of you. That is 60 people. Now, what I need everybody to do that is got, has gotten this class for me, these kits would have mailed out to you last week, Tuesday or Again, roses is still on my back counter. Um, I feel like there's a couple more still here on my back counter if you've recently signed up. Check to make sure you have this set of card kits. I wanna make sure you have it. Um, hi, Marlene from Alberta. Uh, the one thing I wanna make sure is that you're not missing your kits uh, because I can fix it yet if for any reason you haven't gotten them and you should have gotten them, that's important. So uh, if you're uncertain, like if you don't have them, reach out to me like Rose did. She said, she just checked in to see if I still have them. I do, but we are going out. There are a couple others that are here too. If for any reason you think that they should be by your house by now and you don't have them, always reach out to me right away. I still have the ability to fix it right away if we still have kits here. And if, if it gets to be like a month from now, the kits are gone and then it takes a lot to figure it out what to do to fix it. So I always wanna make sure everybody has their kits. The other thing is Diane's doing this class in person tomorrow night and she has two extra sets. She has 10 for class, which is amazing. I asked her to kit up 12 because it always happens that during class that I do with you guys, that somebody else wants to get the kits. And so I asked her to kit up two more so that we have two waiting in the wings, I guess, in case anybody else wants to get this class. Perfect. So let's go back to what I was getting at here. <laughs> I realized that there is a piece back here that, yes, I did call you, <laughs> Laura Sullivan, and I didn't say it three times, hi, Deanne Dawn. Usually I say Laura Sullivan, calling Laura Sullivan to make sure you hear it. I realize now when I pulled out my kit, you guys, I only put one sweet sorbet mat, so we have an option. There, there technically are two of this piece on this card, and I put one. And I think the reason I did it is because this, it, get, it gets hidden back here. We did it to provide extra support to the embossed piece, but I think we're gonna work with what we have because I think it will still work. But if you're at home and you do have Sweet Sorbet, which is one of the retiring ink colors, you can opt, if you don't mind, to, to cut a piece of five and a quarter by four, if you have it. For those that don't have it, we're gonna show you how to work with it because you still have a lot of pieces in here to work with. Two options you're gonna have is, this will be option one, to keep it on the outside of your card. And then on the inside of your card, you would put the piece of white and you wouldn't have the red in there, right? And then this piece will go down here like that. 
all right? Now, if you do have the five and a quarter by four that you could cut at home, <clears throat> excuse me, you could double mat the inside. Double matting is something that Diane and, and I always do for let's just stamp and ink, paper, scissors. All right, so that's option one that you could do. Option two, which is what I might opt for, is to put, because this generally looks the same, it just has a little bit more of a petal pink presence because you've lost a little bit of the sweet survey mat. So this would be option two, having the honeycomb directly onto our flap there, and then putting the mat that I give that I did give you in here and having it double matted on the inside. So when you put it together like this, it generally will look the same, and then you will still see the sweet survey when you are easeling it up. And I think that is probably what I'll go for. And I'm wondering where my ribbon is. It's right there. <laughs> you guys, I was just gonna say, I can't find my ribbon, I don't have my ribbon, but I looked underneath my kit and there was my ribbon. So you should have about two and a half inches of ribbon that you'll use at the top here. You should also have this piece, which is gonna be for your tag. You'll have two bee bodies for the bees. You'll have two sets of petal pink hearts that are the wings. Don't lose your little translucent vellum wings. Those are paired up with that. You'll have a little scrap, it's not a scrap, it's actually the size of the tag here on the bottom. That's gonna be just to add a little uh, buffer down here to break up the tag. Piece of designer paper. You'll have a little 5 eighths inch strip here for a sentiment. And then again, the rhinestones were part of this kit. So I think we're ready to get going. The double matting. I think I'm gonna opt for the double matting. The card will generally look the same and I think I'm okay with that. This one has just a note to let you know that you are loved and it says happy birthday. So those stamps, I'm gonna go grab them really quick, are from Lovely and Sweet, I believe. Or actually they're called, it's called Notes of Nature. There's also one in here that says, today is all about you, happy birthday. But we're already saying happy birthday on the outside. So it must be the other one that I did have it correct. Huh, not really. <laughs> it's actually, you guys, it's from Magnolia Mood. Just a note to let you know they're loved, that you are loved. That's what we'll use because I feel like everybody should know that they're loved. So let's go with that for this birthday card. And I stamped the sentiments in Memento Black. But for those of you who know what I've done, I've made my white ink pad, my, my black ink pad, by adding memento ink to it. And we're just going to take our stamp. If you need to practice beforehand, go for it. But we're gonna do this first here. I'm gonna try to get that straight on here. If it doesn't end up straight, just remember you can always flip it over and do the other side. And then the happy birthday, happy birthday, came from Magnolia Mood. We'll put him on straight, ink that up. Now, this one's hard because you have the P, the P, the Y, and the Y that need some extra room along the bottom. So we're going to just see what that looks like. Oh, wow. Okay, the only thing that I realized that I might have done is stamped it a little bit closer to the right because I want to angle my end. So we're just going to flip it over and see if I can stamp it a little bit closer to the left to center that better and see if I can still keep it straight. And it is. Good deal. So that's it for black ink for right now. Then what we can do is you grab your paper scissors and banner the ends. I prefer bannering uh, make sure you do them, hang on, the same way. You could, like, this is actually not bannering. This is, to me, slanting the ends. Bannering would be actually making little banners. So that's what I did, just slant the ends. And now let's stamp our bees. So the bees are down here. Oh, the bees are a little bit harder. This, we set up the Stamparatus for doing the MS Benefit just because you could go over and over and over <laughs> and not worry about it getting crooked on you. So the Stamparatus was an awesome, amazing 
item that you could purchase through Stampin' Up, you know, through a demonstrator, and they had to retire it. I don't know if it's already about a year now, but what happens is you create a mask. So some of you might even have a Stamparatus, but never have used it. This is perfect for what it's, like, a perfect use for it. What you're going to do, I, this white piece sometimes has been wiggling around on me. So I always like to hover over the top to make sure I've got it in the right spot before actually stamping. Oh, let's get that guy right back in his home here. So I'm just hovering over it. It looks like it's lined up now. And then what you do is you ink this up. I started at one, Laura, and we just are on our first card now. <laughs> we had a lot of jibber jabber. We did. We had a lot of updates to go over. So we have three easier cards. I, well, I don't know if they're easier, but we have three nice cards versus four. So I have a good feeling we're still going to finish off by three o'clock. So this yellow piece might stick and that's okay. All you have to do is put it right back in its home right here. So it's straight. And then ink. I'm going to do this three times. So ink that up. When you're using a Stamparatus, it's good too to put something over here to help it so that the plate stays flush. All right, so there's two. I'm gonna do it one more time for good measure. And after three times, if you're still not happy with it, you could do it a fourth time. And see what happens. All right, so that's three times. From the video, you guys probably think it looks pretty good. I just, I'm gonna do one more just to see what it does. If you get to the point where you're not getting more ink, there's just something with black ink on cardstock that doesn't always stamp so good. Like that's fine, like it could work, but this is where I had a black marker here for everybody yesterday. You could always take a black marker and do the assist. So if you get your stamped once, just know you could take a black marker and help draw it in so that it makes it look a little bit darker. I don't know if anybody else had problems stamping black on colored cardstock, even yellow, you'd think it would show up. But it just, it doesn't show up quite as crisp as I'd like it to. So just be careful that you don't go over the edge of where the actual stamped image is. And so by taking the marker to it, it helped it out. So there's one. And with punches, sometimes you get these little hairs that are hanging off the edge of them, just snip them off with your scissors. I, my gals who help me out with punching, sometimes the punch just does that and I can't have them stop every time to take a scissors and snip that off, especially when I go through the class, I can show you guys, just snip it off. So we're gonna take this and do the same thing and see the difference. This is one time, right? So if you just do one time, knowing that three times might not work so well, what you could do then is take your marker and follow the line from the stamp. You might not even have these stamps. <laughs> if you don't have these stamps, you could just freehand the lines anyways, and that would be perfectly okay as well. So you saw here I just did it one time, and I'm gonna follow the lines here. And then you don't have to kind of take the extra time to do it three and four times. And if you go a little bit outside, just kind of capture it back and straighten out your line. Does anybody have suggestions <laughs> for doing the bee stamping with lines? <clears throat> for those at home too, if you have the bee punch and the bee stamp set, I would probably recommend stamping your lines and then punching out afterwards. But your call, however you, however it works best for you. All right, let's get the ink out of here so I don't accidentally get anything in it. Oh, but we're not done with the ink because we have to put a smiley, happy face on our bee. Now remember the bees are facing each other. So if you stamp your faces both like this, one's gonna be wrong. So you're gonna have to make them go opposite ways so that they're looking at each other and grab whichever bee face you want. And then if you don't have the bee face in a stamp set, like in the stamp like that, you could also take your marker and draw it in, right? So either way, whatever you wanna do. Sometimes people don't always have the stamps and I like to show you a way to get around necessarily. I always say, 
Buy what you love, but use what you have for a class with me. Don't buy something unless you really want it. All right, we have that to the point now. We're ready to get assembly happy. Let's find our wings. So what you can do, oh, two. So two is right for you, Laura, though, because you're, you're in Eastern time. I'm in Central. So it would be one Central and then two Eastern. I'm taking the edge of my bone folder and burnishing the wings just to kind of give them a little bit of a curve so that they look like they're 3D. I always like to do that. And what I would do is take the vellum heart and put a glue dot on the back side of the heart and then connect it. Now, here's the thing. These, <laughs> I, I should have thought of this before. The hearts are not mere images. Don't ask me <laughs> why they're not, but they're not. So you wanna make sure that you burnish them the same way. If they are backwards, they will be off kilter just a little bit. And fortunately, I had mine the right way. If you, before you burnish them, if you put them on top of each other, one will not work if it's backwards. They will be off, their, their humpty humps will be off just a little bit. So then after I've got these two connected, I'm gonna put a glue dot then on the front of the vellum and then attach that to the back side of my B like this. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with this one, putting that on the back side like that. So we've got our bees kind of set. If you don't like seeing as much of the wings, you can always pull them down, like push them down, I guess, so that they're a little bit less is exposed. And then we're gonna just flip these over and put a few dimensionals on the back so that they're ready to go. I'm gonna put one and actually putting it right where the heart connects to the bee body would be beneficial too. So I know this is this is dimensional overload for the back of this bee, but why not, right? All right, so those are ready to go. Then let's see what we can do here. We have to make this into a tag. And to make it into a tag, we need to clip off the corners here. Now you don't have to, you could leave it with your corners 90 degree angled. That's perfectly fine, that works. But what we're gonna do is, we're gonna measure down a half inch and put a tick mark here. And then we're gonna measure down a half inch and put a tick mark there. And then I think we're gonna come in, I believe it was five eighths of an inch. If I go right here, yep, five eighths. So then we're gonna bring the ruler into five eighths and it's really hard to see with the glare. So we're gonna do five eighths and five eighths. Now you guys need to do this. I did not do this for everybody before it got kitted up. I figured I would teach you how to do this so that you know what's going on. Then grab your little trimmer and you're gonna cut off from one tick mark to the other tick mark. I don't know if you guys can see here, all I'm gonna do on my little baby guillotine or on your paper trimmer, you wanna just line it up so that the tick marks, wherever your tick marks are, you're gonna cut the corner off. So find that little spot here and get it set up there and cut them off. Then if you can still see your pencil marks, you're going to want to erase them because nobody wants to see those pencil marks. You might, the person who you're giving it to or you might not ever see them ever again, but if you can see them right now, I would just erase them. So that's how we're doing the little tag. We're just earmarking them. And then what we can do is get a little bit glue happy so we're gonna flip that over. And what we can do is flip this over. Let's see here. Actually, let's take one thing at a time. We're gonna do this little bit and we will get that put onto the bottom of our tag like that. Make sure it's flush on two sides the bottom and the left or the right, and then you can always trim off the other. Uh, thank you to Karen Wetstein. <laughs> she cut that perfectly. She cut all the designer series paper and a lot of these little labels for us. Rhonda Ayers did embossing for us, which was awesome. Punching too, Tammy and her mom, Sandy, did a lot of uh, help with die cutting, not die cutting for this class, but punching. I'm just holding this and I'm going to nip off that corner or like the edge there. This actually needs to get popped up. We're making an easel card. So this bottom ridge here needs to get popped up with dimensionals. And what I think I'm gonna do is grab the edge here 
and run a track. Oop, that's connected on the end. One moment, please. That's connected and that's connected. And we're gonna run this track along the top and the bottom here. And then this will get put down at the bottom and it does go end to end. And you just have to be careful setting this on here that you don't get it too crooked. All right, and then this will get flipped over and we're gonna put some glue. And at the same time, as long as I have the glue open, you guys have to make the executive decision. What side of the hive embossing folder do you wanna see? What I've been told is this, the, this is the true way that we're supposed to see it. But if you do prefer this way, it's your card. <laughs> you can do it however you want to. And what I'm gonna do is use that one. And I'm going to, for good measure, just put a little bit right up at the top. And then I'm gonna put it along the bottom here and up the sides and in this section. And then we're gonna put a little bit of glue on the back of our white here. So let's just set this over here for now. And the important thing is you don't put glue on the top here. You will lose the easel ability if you put the glue up here. So this is just going to get centered top to bottom, left to right on here. And again, you do not want adhesive right here. That's why I put the adhesive on the petal pink so I didn't risk going over. All right, so there's that. And then this will be our inside, like that. And then we're gonna flip this over and glue that on the inside. I do like seeing the sweet sorbet in between the white and the petal pink. It really makes this pop. And that is how we create the easel for that. Easel cards are a lot of fun. Okay, so now you have this ribbon. You have to figure out a way how to attach it to your card. If you really wanted to, you could punch a hole and run it through the hole and then tie a knot. That would work. I do like staplers. I like incorporating them into cards. This is what it looks like with having a stapler used. Sometimes it is very hard to get it to staple how you want it to. So what I would do, just to give me a little bit of an assist, I will put a little dot of, uh, a little mini glue dot right at the top there. I don't want it to kind of be where the staple is. I want it to be a, a little bit higher to help me hold my ribbon down. So I'm gonna fold this in half and I'm gonna stick that right in the middle area here. All right, so that helped with the one. <laughs> I'm gonna grab another one. I would never use liquid glue to do this. It will not be good with your ribbon. But I'm gonna take another little dot of mini glue and that will help it to actually look like it's there, right? You, don't, you won't even have to use a stapler if you don't want to. But I love the idea of using a stapler. Stampin' Up! used to have a stapler back in the day. It's this gray stapler. You might even have it in your arsenal somewhere. Uh, they don't make it anymore. It's been a number of years, probably five years. This stapler is a little bit smaller than a traditional stapler. And I have a purple stapler that I absolutely love. I got it at a craft store in San Diego in about 2016. And I bought every staple that they had to go with it so I would never run out. I'll have this for the rest of my life. And this one is actually even a little bit more narrow than the Stampin' Up! one. And personally, it doesn't matter because they don't, Stampin' Up! doesn't have a stapler at the moment. So you can use whatever you want and you don't even have to use a stapler. But I'm going to put that right over the top and the stapler is now gonna hold it a little bit more. I tried to not put the staple where the glue is, otherwise it gets goopy, like it would have gotten kind of jammed up there. So I made sure my ribbon was down far enough so that it was below where the hump of the mini glue dots were. Okay, hopefully that makes sense to everybody. And this is gonna get popped up and put on the front of our card then. I think six will be good. Let's get those. And then as long as I got these, I'll flip these over and get these backs off of the little bees. I think that between perennial lavender and the B set. Those are the number like one and two sweets. I don't know what order. People really liked the bees and people really like in my eyes and maybe it's because I think that's what it is because of bees and purple but we did really good with people getting the bees and signing up for classes that were using the bees and perennial lavender. I do have it crooked. I'm having a hard time. I'm more of a straight. 
up and down like that and that do, doing things diagonal is a little bit hard for me. I'll be the first to admit that, but I'm gonna do it. We're gonna put it on here a little bit crooked and then life goes on, <laughs> it's okay. And then one B is gonna go here, up a little higher on the right side and the other bee is going to go a little bit lower on the left side. Their little tails can hang, <laughs> their tails, their stingers can hang off a little bit. And then I've got the little happy birthday is between, it kind of helps uh, to be a seam cover upper for the two different designer series papers. And put a little bit on here. And I didn't put any hanging over. Like I didn't want to put any adhesive that on the part that hangs over. And that's like that. We have, so in your gems, you'll have two big, two medium, and the rest are small. So I have a big one here and a small one. And then I'm gonna grab a medium one for over here. I think that's fine, that works for me. And on this one, we have the sweet sorbet, either flower or heart can come over to the side and add a little accent. Now everybody got three, they didn't get more than three. Uh, that flower and gem was out of stock and so it was hard to make sure we had enough for every card we just have one and then we added on the the, the rhinestones take your ribbon scissors and bevel or flag your ends here just cut them at an angle basically and if you want to include any Stella activities you could Stella your wings I think that would be super cool to add a little bit of glitz onto your wings you could Stella anything with your designer paper. You could Stella over the top of your hives. Just put a little glitter. Stay away from the black because the black will bleed. And I see on this one, I am going to round this just a little bit more like that. Because I'm not picky at all. <laughs> all right. So all in all, even though I did miss putting one of the mats in. I think that whoever gets this card will be delighted. That's what the back looks like. So no, again, no glue back there. And you've got your inside with the double matting. That's what I chose to do with the one mat. Um, I feel like the red, or the sweet sorbet down here really makes it pop on the bottom when the easel is up. Cool beans and bagels. <laughs> There's our card number one done. I'll give that a second and we'll get the next kit out. All right, this one, ooh, ha <laughs> ha That one is our Z fold card, so let's pull him. We get to stamp some more, oh man, look at this. I have a bee that's already done and waiting here, but he seems to be my little mascot that's hanging out. Hmm, do I want to use him or leave him be? <laughs> Get it? To be or not to be. All right, this one, Sweet Sorbet is the base color with all of these cards, it seemed. It seemed to match very nicely. This is another one that has a score line right in the middle of your five and a half, which is two and three quarters. But this one is going to fold back this time. Make sure you burnish it. All right, so there's that. And then this one is... Just burnish it. This is the piece that comes like that. So this will eventually get glued on here. You should have your two vellum pieces, two petal pink hearts, two more bee bodies. Again, if you have little schnibbles hanging on, you can just take your scissors and nip them off. The bee will not feel it. I promise he will not cry at all. Then you have this piece, and that actually, I had that backwards. This piece goes right here. Then you have a piece of white, which will be the top here. This piece is scored for you here. There's a score line, so this folds back. And ultimately, this white piece is what needs to fit right on here, like that. This blue hive, again, the hive got pulled in. Figure out which way you want it. I'm going to put mine that goes right here. You have another piece here of pool party. That is what goes behind here. And then you have a white inside. So these are lots of pieces. Let's do our stamping first. I feel like that will be good to move and get that done and move that out of the way. So let's grab the chamois here and clean this one up. And then we will also grab a new stamp 
So just a little note to say hello is what we have on the outside of this. And then the little honeycomb goes on the inside. So let's all go to A and W. Just kidding. All right, let's grab the stamps. Just a little note. So this one comes from Notes of Nature. Nature. And we want to stamp it in the bottom right-hand corner. Thanks, Francis. I'm glad you like it. Let's stamp that in the bottom right corner because we got to leave room for our bees. And when you do this, wait, it's this one. One moment, please. Grab the right piece. So go down here. Something like this. Hey, it's straight. Good job. Then we have lots of honeycomb. I think that's it for black ink. Oh, no, we're not. We got to do our bees. But let's finish off with, you could use daffodil or you could use crushed curry, any sort of like a lighter yellow. I think lemon lolly would be too light, but if you have a daffodil, that's what I would opt for. And then you want to grab a scratch paper to put underneath here and here. So this one, we've got the honeycomb hanging out in the bottom right corner for the inside. And then for this one, we originally had this on with nothing and it seemed naked, right? When you put that on there, it needed something. That is why we grabbed the honeycomb and put that on here. However you wanna stamp it, random, haphazard, straight, just know the B is gonna go right about there. So we could put this one here, and put a couple right there, maybe a single one right there, all the single ladies. All right, there's one. Let's put this hanging out right there and maybe one more like that. By the time when we get the bees on, it won't look so straight. <laughs> All right, I think that's it for yellow. And let's stamp our bees then. Back to the Stamparatus with this one. I like the idea of doing it a couple times. One time didn't seem quite enough, but I went with it. We're gonna try it probably two times. Four to not do anything extra. And if you have an awesome, amazing black memento pad, you might do much better than I am doing. But I don't care what black ink pad I have, I don't always get a nice crisp image when I'm stamping. That's not so amazing. So we're going to go again like that. And we're gonna go again, I think one more time, and then I'm gonna use my marker again to fill it in. All right. So, it's good, but not good enough. But we'll come back to it. So then let's put this one right here. And we'll do this three times as well, just to get our good solid base. Do you guys, I, nobody's saying anything. I'm curious, do you guys have the same issue with the B, the stripes on cardstock? I don't, I struggle. Whoop, he moved. It's always important to make sure he's back in his home spot. All right, that's enough for me for now. Then what we'll do is, again, these are opposite. So when we stamp our face, we gotta make sure we do them opposites, attract, right? So he's that way and he's this way. And then from there, I'm gonna grab my marker, my black marker, and do the assist and color in a little bit. I just want it a lot sharper looking, I guess is what you could say. So let's, gotta be careful that you don't go over the edge on these and then I am right-handed so I'm gonna flip it around and bring it back this way All right that's good you get the little ends here and then I'll go up here and get that one <laughs> he's round and round he's going he's gonna have be dizzy by the time we're done with him there's that perfect I'm good with him now and then let's help this one out Okay, if you do not do good with these bees, you can always flip them over. They are mirror image, so when you flip it over, you could always try stamping the back. 
and had issues just stamping the stripes once on the bees. Okay. I just hope you guys don't all have issues like that it's not workable. Hopefully everybody finds a way to make their bees look amazing. And if the stamps are not doing you justice, you can freehand it. You really can. And if you aren't good with freehanding it, ask somebody. <laughs> a child, a mother, a grandkid, anybody that can come over and help you with it. If you can't keep the line straight, <laughs> have somebody help you. So I'm good with that. Perfect. That's where the markers do come in handy. For these, this is what I was talking about with these hearts. If you hold this one, they're perfect. They line up. But if you put it backwards, they are off. I'm matching up the bottom. The bottom is lined up, but then you can see here. I wonder if you guys can see this. If I do this, if you can see that they're not, they're not mirror images. So when you do them, you want to make sure that you have them the same way. I got very lucky on that first set of bees that they were lined up perfectly. And that one is not the right way. They must go like that. Okay. You bought well, three black women on three at three different times. I do not like the black. I always use my marker to make it look. Yes. With memento, absolutely. I have found, even with, so I, you guys know I made my white black pad, right? I made that. This is perfect and it works really good for non-solid stamps. It works really good for sentiments. It works good for outlines, but it still doesn't work amazing for solid stamping, like black and solid. Oh, the stays. So I tried Irene and Cheryl. I tried stays on too, and my stays on pad doesn't do much better. Uh, not much better at all. All right, so we got our hearts. If I only had a heart, can go right here. And I do struggle with black memento, so I did what you did with the un and added black ink. So I might need to add a little. We use this pad for everybody who came in person on Saturday, which was about 20 people. And then we made the cards with, I've been using that black ink pad a lot. So it's very possible that I need to give a, a good re-inking as well to help get some black on there. Got to run. Bye, Mary Carls. Got you. I'm glad you got packed today. Yay. Try. You're going to be off and traveling soon. So we're going to put the wings on the back of the bee like this. Now, I'm not going to put the dimensionals on quite yet because we got a little bit of finagling with them. But I think we can get a little bit glue happy on this at this point. We're going to first, let's get our arm attached to this thing. So you want to make sure when you're looking at this, um, hi, Karen, what's sign that you have your square here? This is where this designer paper is going to go. Okay. This is where this piece is going to go. And this arm, whoa, the one that flies through the air with the greatest of ease, is going to be the folded edge here is going to be flush with this edge. So what could we glue? <laughs> We're going to glue this and this and this and my edge here. So I think we can handle that. So we're going to do this one, this one, this designer paper, and then just your tab. Okay, so the tab goes first. The flush and here, the folded flush end, it's, you wanna make sure it's all aligned here nicely. Ooh, Laura said that close to my heart has nice black ink pads. So I wonder with our soon to be marrying up of companies, if we'll get good black ink pads <laughs> or better, I should say. All right, so there's that. Then make sure your bees are the right way. There isn't a direction. This bee right here, you want him to be going up and down and not upside down. <laughs> All right, so that's going to go right here. Now this little rectangle, this is the one that's going to go here. And then this one is for our inside. You guys are going to be amazed. There's no ribbon on here. You're going to be not amazed. You're going to be sad probably. We could not figure out where to put ribbon on here. So we did opt to not do ribbon. Oh, we just didn't know where to put it. We couldn't figure out a spot. But if you have the ribbon at home, the Sweet Survey ribbon, and you want to add it, by all means, go for it. And then let me know where you added it because <laughs> we just didn't know where to put it on. All right, so I'm going to flip these two over, and we're going to get them glued down. Lots of glue with this one. Otherwise, it might come off. If you guys are using Tape Runner, 
and it's not really permanent tape runner, this is the kind of embossed piece that is gonna fall off later with, in, um, with cheaper tape runner. All right, so that liquid glue will help hold that there. I opted for my hives, like they look like that versus the bumpy outs that way. So this is gonna go here. All right, so our blue pieces. And if you want to, you could, if you have this designer paper at home, you wanna help it out, you could even put another piece right here if you want. You could even put more here, but we opted not to, we left it off. And now we have to connect our two cards together, okay? So ultimately, this right here, this is gonna get glue, and it's gonna get put on somewhere around here, and then this is going to need to get glued only in the spot that's touching the pool party. So how would you do that? Right, with liquid glue, you have wiggle room. And what I mean by that is we can put our glue on the back side here, right? So that's ready. And let's just leave that for now. And I'm gonna slide this flap here into this flap as I put this down. And because it's liquid glue, I have some ability to situate this however I want it to be before it gets glued permanently. So what I'm doing is I'm centering it top to bottom, right? And then this gap here, I actually like it like, let's see if I wanna move it. You can move it to wherever you wanna see it. It's more even. Um, in this one, I have more blue showing over here and less over here. So because you use the liquid glue, you have the ability to finagle it to get it to where you want it. Ultimately, I think having it straight is important. All right, so now we've got this part glued, but now we need to glue this right here. And how would I do that? I would put, I know that I don't want glue outside where my pinkies are, so I'm gonna put a line of liquid glue right there, but then I also could put a little coming out here and do this area, but I don't wanna go too far over, and to make sure I don't go too far over, I'm gonna put my glue right there. So now when I shut this, I'll have plenty of glue to hold this down. All right, so in good business here. Then it comes down to putting, so it pops up like this, right? It's like, oh, it's not staying together. That's where this little bee comes in. You want that little flap to go behind him. And how you do that is by not putting any dimensional right here. Oh, I got a different face. Huh, you guys, did you notice that? Uh, the face I used on this guy, it has the two little dots. And this is the guy that's like, ha ha ha, I just got away with something. He's got that little smug face. All right, <laughs> back to the dimensionals though. We do not wanna put dimensionals here. So the B is gonna be situated right about here. And what I'm gonna do is, I know I want a dimensional there and I want one here. I'm pretty sure that works out good for me. Right? And then I'm also gonna put one behind more to the left-hand backside of the wing, all right? And then this gets popped up right about here. And that is what holds the flap. So when somebody opens it, then that just gets tucked behind there. Now this guy is gonna hang out right about here. You have to make sure you don't put any adhesive on the part that's hanging up and over. So on this one, I think putting two dimensionals right along his bottom area will be perfectly perfect. Something like that. And then I've got, I can use a medium gem here. And then two of the smaller ones will go, I'd put one over on the blue over here and maybe one right about there. I covered up the heart, but it, it worked perfectly right there. And then you should have a blue gem. The blue gem is meant to go on this card. Now I have a heart on this card. I had a flower that fit over the top of a flower, so you probably can't even know that that's there. But the heart would be super cute, right? Maybe in the middle of these two. I don't know, something like that. Because they're, they're liking each other. Then you have three rhinestone cowboys left for the next card, and you have a, another petal pink for the next card. All right. That wasn't so crazy, was it? Stella up your wingsies. Stay away from anything stamped just because it will make it bleed. If you need more Stella, 
All you have to do is squeeze it, but don't ever squeeze it over the top of your project. Squeeze it, like I always go over my hand because then I can always wash my hand off. But you, there's a push and a push. And when you push that, it lets the Stella juice come through the barrel and rehydrates the brush tip. Hi, Catherine Phillips. You caught a live, yay. All right, so you can Stella around town here. Just adds a little bit of glitzy. All right, we didn't even talk about the Radically Retro Swap Party. You guys, we had a very busy weekend. <laughs> I just realized it now, why I'm so, like, I woke up this morning, I'm like, I feel like I didn't get any sleep this weekend. Did my taxes, right, between Thursday and Friday night, that's what I did was taxes. And Saturday, we had the MS benefit, basically all day. I worked then all night until probably 10 o'clock, I think, working on emails. I worked on emails from, like, 5 until 10, right? So that felt good to get a little bit up, caught up on emails. And then Saturday, Sunday morning, we had the Silverbration celebration to celebrate the gals on my team who are currently still actively silvers by meeting the standards of sales and having a team member. So that was Sunday morning from like 11 to 1. And then we had the Radically Retro Swap Party yesterday from 3 until 6. And I have about 96 or 94 or 92 cards to share with you guys. And I will be scheduling a retro swap, case, swap card showcase with you in the near future. Uh, and so I'll be sharing all those cards with you. So, <laughs> and then it was last night. So, whew. all right, we got two cards done. Yay. I'll leave that here for a second yet. And then we'll pull out the last card kit that you guys have. And, oh man, this is the bookmark card. Oh man, okay. Oh, this is gonna take a little bit of work, you guys. It really will. And we can make it. And it's, it's good. It's gonna be good. I'm gonna teach you guys how to do this little flippy, flappy, foldy, backy thing. <laughs> I'm gonna have to see if I remember myself. All right, I think I do. I, we'll, we'll get through it, we will. All right, so pull all your bits and parts from this card. I'm gonna move him out now. So this is a fun fold as well because this little bookmark comes out. So whoever you give this to, hopefully they catch that it's a bookmark and they can save their bookmark. Oh, we've got the little flower in the bottom and this is today is all about you. Happy birthday. All right. Let's see, there's a lot in this kit as well. <laughs> All right, so it's a traditional card and the fact that it opens up like that and then everything else kind of pops on the front. So let's get rid of that. And I have this piece of dimensional that I just got to remember to use. I'm going to set it right there so I don't keep forgetting. Bone folder, burnish this edge. So it opens up like this. Hi, Kenzie. All right, so that opens like that. And then grab... this piece. So Rhonda did emboss all this for you and I'm looking at it and it's the softly stippled. It matched, it matched the, like the little dots from the softly stippled matched the little dots that are the B tail here or the B aftermath. Now the way that wine was folded was I would say backwards. The way that this got put in the kit, I want the bump up to be top. I don't want the bump the, like the intro introverted down or however it is. So I'm actually going to flipper still skin this this way and refold it backwards. Okay. I hope that makes sense. I want this bump up to be, I'm trying to get it. So there's not such a shadow. I'm trying to get the bump up to be facing up. All right. But we can't get glue happy on this. We do have to cut off a little bit here and this designer paper. We have to cut this off. So you guys will have a decision to make. Do you want to do a bookmark card or not? If you opt, you're like, oh my goodness, I don't want to do a bookmark card. That's too much work. It's too much work. It's okay. You don't have to. This is your card. Do it however you want. You could get completely by and put this on like this and just glue everything flat, not cutting off the corner and life is good. Move on. Happy donkey. Happy Dory, right? Happy Dory. If you want to do this, we, we I will show you how to cut this and it's not it's. No, it's okay, it's, but it's not as simple as you think it would be because of the DSP. We learned our lesson. So let's get this cut right away. Um, we'll do that, but I want to show you what else is in here. You have your B. Some of you have Bs facing the other way. It just worked out that some of you have the big B with two wings. It's a, if you, you have a B and just is on there. This is the piece here that goes back here, and then these two pieces 
my machine does that. I don't know if you guys ever catch that, that there's sometime a little ridge that is about three quarter. That's my big paper cutter. It gets squished there. So you can always take your fingers and kind of smooth it out and make it better. So these will go like this. That's for the top here with our B. Then our bookmark are these two pieces. And again, we'll have to notch off our, our ends. And then in this case, we have a double matting and the ribbon's in here. The ribbon is for your your bookmark. And then we did double mat this for the inside. All right, we'll save our stamping for a moment. Let's do our little cutting as long as we're focused on cutting. I have my handy dandy notes to tell you how to do this. So I believe it's this one actually, this one must go with that. What we're gonna do is we have to mark with a pencil. So let me grab my pencil back. And I believe it's two inches that we're gonna go down. And I have it written down. I just wanna, before I do it, I know it's written in the tutorial as well, but I wanna make sure I don't tell you guys wrong. Score at two and a quarter, four and a half. And then I, wow, I don't know if I wrote it on here. I know what I did with the DSP is marking two inch down and three, okay. So I am, I'm gonna just, double check. It's in the PDF. I don't feel like pulling up the PDF real quick. I'm just going to mark. It is two inches. That's what I had in my head. <clears throat> so what you need to do is grab out your ruler and your pencil and at two inches, make a little tick mark down on this, this open ended area right here, right? So this corner town two inches. And what you're gonna have to do is grab out your trimmer and you're gonna cut from the two inch mark to the first score line here. And I'm gonna line up the score line and the tick mark. And you do like that left, right, left, like when you're crossing the road. You get one set, you get the other one set, and then you gotta go back and check the other one to make sure it didn't move on you. And when you're set, that you know that they're right, chop it off. Make something pretty with your little corner if you want to. <laughs> you could always like glue it on the inside of your card if you wanted. All right, so that's good. That is what we needed to do for this. Again, the magic number is two inches, okay? So then we need to do something similar with this one. But it's not as easy as going down two inches to the top here. It's not. Um, this paper is cut at five and a sixteenth. So it is as easy on this side going down to two inches, but you can't go up to the corner here. You, can, you can't, it's not gonna be right. And I'll show you why it's not right. I can fix it because if you do this, I wanna show you why you can't do it. And this is when Diane and I were doing it, we actually figured out, oh, that doesn't work that way. So what happens, and I think if I do it, I'm not gonna mess it up too bad. It's gonna go this way and okay. So I put my two inch here and I'm gonna show you why you can't do it this way. <clears throat> the two inch, you think, oh, I'm just gonna cut it up to two inches. Well, when you take the two inches and you cut it up to the, to the corner here, like we did on the other one, that's all fine and dandy, but the angle is off, right? It goes up at an angle too high. So really, before you do your cutting, you want to actually come down 3 16ths of an inch. And it is 3 16ths of an inch. I apologize for the 16ths, but it is 16ths of an inch. And I'm trying to figure out here what, I have 30 seconds on this ruler, because that's an eighth of an inch. So it's like right here. So I'm gonna mark down about 3 16ths of an inch. Right? So I put my little pencil mark, 3 16ths of an inch, and I can fix this. So if you do it wrong too, you can fix it. I'd rather you do it right to begin with though. So again, it was marking it two inches down here and 3 16ths down. So I'm gonna put my mark right back there so I know where my tick mark is, and I'm gonna bring this down to where the 3 16ths is, and I'm only trimming off that little bit, but it makes all the difference because now you have the angle that you need it to be, right? So the reason it was 3 16ths is because we, our mats are 3 16ths less, not a quarter inch, we actually did 3 16ths. And if you cut it and you see that your angle is not quite right, it's like, whoa, it got a little skinny up there, just take your trimmer back and trim off just that hair. Like make sure you're fine where my finger is right here, this finger, is make sure that your corner doesn't move there, but then notch off a little bit more, and little by little, you're gonna get it to be precisely where you want it, 
Like, I hope, I hope anyways, like that is my goal. It's, like that is good to me. I'm happy with that. Now, the thing with this also is you want to erase off any little pencil marks that you can, whoa, ooh, leaning tower of Pisa that fell down on the floor. All right, so poor little paper trimmer took a digger. I'm going to pick you up because I feel bad that you're laying on the floor. All right, let's get you back home. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Oh, okay, so if none of you did that yet, what you really, I wanted to show you what not to do. If, and the PDF instruction tells you the measurement. So if you're not catching it now, it's down two inches and down three sixteenths, okay? So that's what we've got. All right, I think we're in shape now. We can glue some stuff. So what we could do, I'm gonna get a little glue happy on this one before we do stamping, just because I feel like we gotta switch it up a little bit. All right, I'm gonna flip this over. As long as I'm getting my glue out, I'm gonna get glue happy glue these two things together. That's our two bookmark pieces. So I'm going to flip that over. This is my inside. And then I can also glue the back side of this. All right. So this is one thing we're going to get into the end here. So we're going to do this guy, right? We can do the back of this. Okay. We can do this, which is our inside mat. And then we can glue our bookmarks together or bookmark pieces. If you decide you like the hearts better, you can always do the hearts. I only had a heart. Now, I have this in my hand. We're gonna line these up. The only reason we put this sweet sorbet piece back here is to provide a little bit of structure, just so that it wasn't so flippy floppy. All right, so that just makes it a little bit stronger. Make sure we're flush, I can always trim it. Now this one then, this goes onto our card base. Make sure you have it opening the right way. This goes right onto the front, like that. Then our little designer paper cut at an angle can go right on top of this, like that, right? And then open your card up, and that's where our inside mat can go for right now. And we'll add the white one in a moment. Okay, so far so good. Ah, Debbie Gass said she did it right the first time. Good job, good job. Now, the important thing with this is you're not putting glue here. <clears throat> Excuse me, we need to create a pocket for our card. So if you have, it's just like, what do I do? You can use your tear and tape, but your tear and tape is a little bit thick, right? It's a little bit wider than what you want it to be. And I have from a paper pumpkin from the past, a thin little eighth inch tear and tape. This is perfect. If you don't have eighth inch tear and tape, you can always take your quarter inch tear and tape and cut it this way, right? And make it eighth inch or about eighth inch, or you can buy eighth inch tear and tape too. And what you wanna do is put the tear and tape along this edge right here, okay? And then the bottom, you could use liquid glue if you wanted, that doesn't hurt. You just don't want your liquid glue oozing out all over the place and having a hot mess and getting it stuck everywhere. Eighth inch tear and tape is the ticket for this. Just, because tear and tape is really permanent in nature. I want that to come up just a hair more. I should have done it closer to this edge than that edge. So I will just grab a little bit more, hang you back up over yonder. And then I just bring that up a little higher. So we've, we're creating a pocket now because we're not putting any glue here or adhesive here. You flip that over. And that's where our pocket is gonna be for our for our bookmark. Very nice. All right, now back to our bookmark. Whoa, I just threw it on the floor. <laughs> Hang on. All right, so I was looking at the back of my bookmark and the designer paper is a little bit longer or wider than what my DSP is. So I think what I'm gonna do is because you can see the front and the back of the bookmark, I'm gonna take my scissors trim that so that little, it's a schnibble. It's not a mutt, not a lot, but it was just enough. I'm gonna grab my trimmer back and I think I wanna try to trim that little bit that's overhanging off the edge here, there. So now from the back, you really don't see as much as of the designer paper. We're gonna need this in a moment. We have to do one more measuring and cutting here and it's to get the corners off and I'm not sure certain if I wrote it on here 
but we're going to just measure this. It's in the tutorial again. I don't, I think it's just a half inch and it's three. Oh, it's a half inch and three eighths. Okay. So measure down a half inch, a half inch from the bottom and do that on the left and the right. Half inch is right here. So right there. And then we're going to go in three eighths of an inch. So there and also here. So we've got, so this is very similar to the first card we did. We're gonna have to like earmark or dog off the ears, however you call it. So line up your pencil mark here and pencil mark here and it's left, right, left. Make sure you <laughs> have them lined up good. And then same thing here, find your pencil mark, find your pencil mark here, here, clip off. And just as long as they're as even as you can get them. Make sure you erase off the pencil mark from each one that you made. Perfect. Now, this is where you guys are gonna have to think, what do you have to make the ribbon attach at the top? You could pop a hole. If you have an eighth inch hole punch, that's good, that would work. If you have an awl, like a pokey tool, you could also poke your hole, but you're gonna see the paper rip out the back, like push out the back. And I've shown this punch. I'm not ashamed of it. I've had this punch for 20 years. I think in the year 2001 is when I bought this old punch and it's like the handle's already yellow and it looks nasty, I get it. It's sun bleached. But I go back to this punch all the time when I need to have ribbon go through a card that is about this quarter inch it punches out a little baby rectangle. Now, if you have the something fancy dies, let me just show you what you could use. You might have these at home, hang on. Ah, of course. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> the something fancy dies are being utilized for die cutting at the moment. So they are not down here. So let's grab the current book and show you the something fancy dies right here. It's gonna be hard to see it, but there's a little teardrop thing. That is the smallest little baby die you could ever imagine. And what it could do, you could put that right here and die cut out a little teardrop. And it would kind of match the hearts. So if you have something fancy dies, you could use that. There are other dies here too, these tags, these tailor-made tags. It, also has a die, they have dies in here to cut out these little holes, right? So if you have tailor-made tags or something fancy, definitely something you could utilize. I, uh, I'm gonna just opt for my punch, I'm going for it. I'm gonna grab my pencil, my pretty purple pencil, and I'm gonna draw the line where I want it to go so that I can line up my punch and see that line through my punch. And I'm just punching a little it's it makes a little rectangle so let's show you what that you can see it just cut a little rectangle you just need a little spot to put your ribbon through and then what you're gonna do is fold your ribbon in half and the folded end goes down right through the back and then it comes up to the front and you're gonna take your tails and put them through the hole the little eyelet whatever you want to call it the hole here now, as you're pulling this, you gotta be very careful. If you pull it, it might rip it. So what I would do is finagle it, <laughs> grab it from here and pull it up. And as you're pulling it to the front, you can pull your tails then. And that gives you the loop in the front and not in, like you don't want the loop in the back, okay? So it's folding it and putting the fold down and then it comes to the front. That's what I did for my tag. All right, hopefully that makes sense. And then what you're gonna do is grab your ribbon scissors, which is not this one and it's not that one. <laughs> and we'll use this one. And you can trim off your tails. I'm gonna make one a little longer than the other. So the back one is taller or longer. And then this is what gets tucked in here. Now you wanted to add something to this like a label that has a pretty sentiment on it and make it flat you could also do that we opted to just give you a nice idea of how to make a bookmark go on a card 
that tucks in there. And then what you're going to need to do is grab, as long as I have a scissors nearby, there are no dies for this designer series paper with these bees. So you are going to have to grab out a snips and do a little chop chop on your bees here. Just like this. Go all the way around the horn with the treble horn. Go up to here and then we'll get him good so he's ready to go onto the card front. And I have not heard anything about the glass mat, Laura. I'm so sorry, I have not. You know, and we're already on, we're almost to, like, we got, okay, we're not almost to May. I was just going to say it. I'm correcting myself. We're halfway through April, right? It is the 15th today. So we're a month and a half after celebration ended, right? Celebration ended in March and April. A month and a half after celebration ended, and I have not heard anything. I'm so sorry I have not. You guys will be the first to know. <laughs> I definitely will tell you. This flap, you guys, I'm like, what's going on with this? This actually needs to get glued down. <laughs> so let's get our glue and glue this down. That can go flat. And I think we're at a point where we should do a little stamping. And we need our white mat for the inside. And this one we use Sweet Sorbet. And I've got Sending Love and Best Wishes. Oh, Melanie Foy says she loves the bookmark. Yay! I love it. All right, so we'll clean this one. And I'll clean these really quick. We can put them away. We'll grab out the sentiments that we do need, which I think are, today is all pretty. The, I love the mixture of the print and then a little bit of cursive on these. And this one needs to go back here. And pull this one out and then we need perennial lavender which is this one or it's called perennial postage love this sending love and best wishes this set did carry over i believe lovely and sweet also carried over here let's put you away all right and that here and grab this. This sentiment is stamped a little bit more to the left because my bee is on the right. Now, if you have a bee that goes this way, you are gonna to wanna to stamp your sentiment more to the right. Hi, Deanna Stell from Michigan. All right, let's put this, and I have it down a little bit. I'm gonna put it up there, I'm guessing. Oh, Kenzie, I'm so happy that you love this card and that I get to use this set again. We did a B class back with Rose Coleman uh, with the Technique Club class in January. And then it was also the Sweet class. And so I did that class with Rose. So we really, we went hot and heavy with the bees in the beginning in January. And then took a little time off and brought the bees back for you guys again. And uh, if you guys are in Canada and you watch me and you're looking to get some card kits just know that rose coleman is my colleague she kits up the technique club class as well as the sweet class and i'm not certain but she might have some b cards left in her arsenal too in her vault um, if you guys are looking to get some more b i don't have any b classes left sandy koi emery you took my last technique club class from january which was the bees i'm happy thank you so much that was a i was wishing and hoping somebody would do that and you did i'm so excited I don't have any bees then left, unless you guys want this class, and Diane Bogenhagen would have a couple kits, and again, you could reach out to me, and I'll help facilitate that, but I asked her to kit up two more, just in case I had anybody that reached out to me that wanted this class yet, so I think we can accommodate that. I have two little stamps here. I'm going to grab, I think it's Granny Apple. Yeah, we're going to do Granny Apple here, and let's grab Granny Apple, and... We'll put our stem on here and grab our little A block. I love me this A block. They are all out of the A block already, unfortunately. They decided to cancel or stop using the little baby A block. And if you got it, it's great for little stamps. We're gonna put the 
little granny apple green there and stamping our little flower flower right there I think that's it for inky dinky do time and now we can get back to being glue happy and what we can do we're gonna glue glue and glue all right and then the white will go and then I'm just gonna I know that where the glue needs to go on that one so we're just gonna do that this one goes on the petal pink like that this one B season is coming. Oh, that's the wrong card. Hang on. <laughs> Let's go over here. This one will go in here. The flower just adds to it. So pretty. And then this one goes here like that. And then there's a lot of height. This paper is folded over, plus there's the bookmark in there. So I'm actually going to put some dimensionals. Oh, I thought I have to use this guy. I'm going <laughs> to... This thing has been hanging out on my counter, getting stuck everywhere. So it's time it gets used. I'm going to just use the entire thing. <laughs> it's more It's more than I need, but I'm just doing it. All right. I just need to get it, got of, it used up. And then, so I added the dimensionals on the one side, and then we're going to put liquid glue there. And now the sweet survey edge here will get lined up with the edge here. And I have a little bit peeking out that I don't want. I'm looking where my lines are. I didn't like the fact that it was red on red. So it can either go down or I can go up with it. But I'm trying to get a little bit of white popping in there. And then you have to take into consideration the top too. So I'm centering this so I see white and I see white. That's what I've got in my head going on. And the reason we didn't put the red, the sweet survey on this side is because you don't need it on this side, but it added to it on this side. The petal pink gets lost if you don't have the sweet survey there. And now this little bee is going to go here. And you're wondering, well, there's a lot of empty space here. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. I, I'll tell you. Uh, we're going to put some gems there and we'll be okay. I'm going to pop up way at the top with the wings and then put the glue down here and he's coming right onto the page he's bringing in a heart for you guys and then we have a big diamond left that I'm gonna move it down instead of having it up higher here I'm actually gonna bring it down here which is fine and then I'm gonna put my heart over here instead of putting the heart here I might put the heart right there and then I've got one more diamond left and you guys should as well and if you want, you can put a third diamond. I'm just going to place it there to see if I like it there. I'm going to see if I like it better down here. And you could put it over here. This is what I do with gems. I don't always push them down. I kind of get a feel for where I think they might look the best. And then once I figure it out, I think that is not good. I actually like it over there. But this is where it comes down. It's your card, you guys. Put it wherever you like it. But I feel like putting these down a little bit lower helps to fill in that space. But you have a lot of pretty embossing over there. So, and move him more diagonal, I think. So one, you might have your B on the right and some of you might have your B on the left and then some of you have a B that is looking straight on, like that looks more like he was like this one back here where it's wings on both sides. Then you guys can figure out he will still probably be, I think fit him over here. And then let's Stella a little bit and call it good to go. You can Stella over the top of this embossed area as well. You can always Stella over along your edges of your mats. That always works out good too. If you want, you can Stella a little bit over this and don't forget your bookmark. Hummingbirds and bees in a gorgeous green thrushes among the fall. It's yeah, so bee season is in Arizona is what Melanie's saying. You could do your little bees here. Definitely stella them up. Very good. Venas, venas, venas. There we go. So da -da -da, we have completed. 
I think that one goes here, you guys. These are the recipe cards that we use when we are designing to try to make notes, to make heads and tails of everything. All right, our bookmark, fun fold. Our Z fold, fun fold. And our easel card, fun fold. This Let's Just Stamp was a fun folds class for you guys. So we snuck in another fun folds class. I don't know if you noticed it, but we snuck it in because you guys like fun folds. <laughs> I think what we're gonna do for the Zinnia class in, the, in July, we're gonna make that be a fun folds class as well. So we haven't designed them yet, but that I think we already got one that's set up to be a fun folds. So we're gonna make the other three fun folds as well. Oh man, we did it. We're a little bit over, like I usually try to keep class to two hours, you guys, I really do. But I had a lot, we talked about the MS benefit a lot. So I'm gonna blame it on that. <laughs> All right. Which one do you guys like the best? That's always what my magic million dollar question is. What do you like the best? Uh, I think that I would pick the bookmark card for me personally. The other thing is you might be thinking, well, there's a lot of white. I have a hard time with white space, right? You could always splatter some Sweet Sorbet ink on here with your Stella pen and get some little drops on here to kind of help it not look so white. Like that is something I would consider doing too. Oh, I found my ribbon scissors. It always is there. All right, so paper can go back. We'll clean up some stamps in a moment. And I think, you guys, I need to share with you some happy mail. I forgot to do this before class started. So let's show you. And I also have three cards. I can announce the winners for these three cards. I have them here. But let's share some happy mail that I got recently. Beautiful cards, yay! And you love all the cards, fun classes. I love the folds, yay! Laura said number two, good. All right, this card comes to us from Miss Carolyn Ketchmark from Minnesota, yay! She's got some of the Tulip Builder punch here. Using some of this plaid paper that came in a couple of different colors, it was really pretty. And I got a little love note in here from Carolyn, a little label that says thanks so much. Very pretty font on that stamp, I like that one. And then a little bit of the green twine here that made it look like the stems. And she knotted it. Super cool. So that was from Carolyn Ketchmark. And then we have a card here from, this is from Deb Norman in Dubuque, Iowa. And this was a past kit. And I'm trying to remember if it was a paper pumpkin or a kit. And I believe it was a kit. She added some of the iridescent ribbon. And during our retro swap party yesterday, Sherry Everett used ink and colored the ribbon a color. I can't remember what color it was, but I remember she, oh, peel, 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 peel papaya, maybe like a peachy color. I would never have thought to color this iridescent ribbon, but you guys don't hesitate to color the iridescent ribbon. You, you would have gotten a roll of that when you did the translucent florals class with me, or if you got it on your own, but it's really pretty to color that iridescent ribbon. Very pretty card, Deb. And then she, she stamped the inside here for me too. Your kindness is so greatly appreciated. So pretty. And then this one had a matching envelope. So I've got a card now. Yay. And then this one comes to us from Naomi Whirl in Mus Muskegon, Michigan, using nature's prints, nature, and then the sparkle gems, a heartfelt thank you. And then it was white with navy. So that came from Naomi Whirl. Nice card. And then this one's from Faye Godby, I believe. Yes, Faye Godby, Quinby, Virginia. I treasure your friendship and a cute little uh, little girl with her little puppers by her side with a butterfly. So pretty. Looks like it's hand drawn. Uh, and oh, the living God giveth us ritually all things to enjoy. Very cool. It's very pretty. I liked seeing the little girl walking with the dog. And then this one came from da -da -da, Mary Carls, Jericho, Wisconsin. So Mary came to the MS card making benefit. And this card you guys might recognize was from an ink, paper, scissors that we did last a year ago, Regency Park, last April of 2023. Very pretty. I loved that set. A little bit of the blue ribbon. And she's got the designer series paper on the bottom. Very pretty card, Mary. I love it. Good job making it. So that's the happy mail I have for you guys. And then we have some winner, winner chicken dinners. Hi, Maria Sanchez. All are beautiful. Yay. Rose said all were beautiful. I love it. You guys love them all. That's awesome. It's a fun fold extravaganza. <laughs> it sure was. All right, you guys, this was from the September monthly class of last year. And we got around to getting winners picked. Yay. So if you missed this class, you could go back to September of 2023. 
It was the monthly class. You could watch the video. If you are interested in the tutorial, it's in the Inspiration Hive or it's available for purchase as well. I don't have it in my online store to purchase, but I have it available in case anybody's looking for it, just so you guys know. So da -da -da, drum roll, please. So very proud of you goes to Patty Wright. Yay, Patty. Da -da -da, our, ha, da -da, our leaves card. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> Autumn Blessings, I think it was... Oh, I can't remember the name of this one, you guys. It was the Distress Tile folder. Um, there was Autumn Leaves is what's coming to my head. Julie Hillsman, congratulations. Julie, you won that card. Da -da -da, our Pumpkin Patch card goes to D and Dawn from Minnesota. Yay, awesome, awesome. Oh, I haven't seen these cards in a few months, so I forgot how beautiful they were. I love it. So I have all of your girls' addresses. Yay, I know where to mail them to. So they will be going out in the near future, and I'm so excited. We have every class now. I've got it lined up that we've got cards that we can give away. We we got caught up on them. Yay. <laughs> so, all right, we did it. We are officially done with the uh, Let's Just Stamp featuring the Be My Valentine, uh, the stamp set, and the punch got utilized as well. So usually with the Let's Just Stamp, we do try not to use anything but paper, ink, stamp sets. We try not to pull in dies, punches, or embossing folders. It was a little bit hard, but I think if you guys would have to vote, you agree that we were good to use the embossing folder and the punches for this class. It was kind of hard to create cards for this class without those, well, especially without the punch because we used the punch for making bees and that was awesome. So there wasn't a lot that you would have needed if you don't have this particular stamp set. You could draw your lines. We looked at it as that you guys could draw your lines on with your bees if you really wanted to. What I would do first, if I were you, take a pencil and draw your lines and then color them in with a black marker. Deb said it was her first class and you love the cards. Yay, Deb. I'm happy to hear that. Uh, the other thing was a lot of sentiments were used. The honeycomb was used, but again, you wouldn't have to use the honeycomb. You could splatter some Stella on and take a colored ink like the Sweet Survey or Daffodil or even the Pool Party and splatter some ink on some of those cards. So you definitely could get by without having the stamp set. If you were watching and you are interested in a set of these cards, you can reach out to me. Uh, I will tell you yes or I will tell you no. It just depends on if anybody else emails me before you. Uh, and also if Diane gets anybody signed up last minute for her class, she will need to use her kits for her class, but I can always add you to the wait list and let you know then more like midweek or later in the week if you have the card. So awesome, we did good. Uh, do I need to tell you guys anything else? I think if you guys missed the beginning and you want to go back and watch for what we talked about, I talked about the In Color Club a lot and also talked about the MS benefit and the Wounded Warrior Project benefit that's coming up. So if you want to hear any of those details, make sure you catch the class from the beginning and watch it whenever it works for you. So awesome. All right. I'm going to work on sending an MS update email to everybody and you can be watching for that in the uh, for the afternoon. And then tonight... I will be having class. I'll be having mystery card night class at 6 p.m. Central time. And we had a little hiccup. Uh, if you guys saw my Houston, we have a problem. I apparently didn't finish reading the clue for one of the card set colors and I completely started writing it and got distracted and not, didn't make it back to that line. And so we did fix that. And there is an email that was sent out yesterday with that fixed. Judy Sharp caught that, thankfully. And uh, so you guys, we're going to be doing clue all the clues tonight and we're going to make it. It is a nice, simple, easy card, but it's going to be amazing because the designer series paper is going to help show it off. And we'll be doing that class at six, actually. And I will be seeing you momentarily. Like in about two and a half hours, we'll be back live for you for that class. And yay. Awesome. All right, you guys, I'm going to let you go. Lots of sunshine, like love and big hugs to you. Enjoy the rest of your evening if I don't see you later. And otherwise I'll see you later. You guys, I love you long time. I'm going to do the music again and we're going to see if it works. I hope it does. And then you can listen to some upbeat music <laughs> afterwards. All right. We'll see you later. Love you long time. Bye.